Hi, my name is Josh, and I watch the FCC approval database, so you don't have to. Um, today we're going to do a virtual teardown of a really interesting thing that hopefully you'll never have to experience yourself, um, and something you probably couldn't get your hands on if you wanted to uh, do an actual physical teardown, which is what's pretty cool about doing these virtual teardowns. Um, I saw this one come up in the feed, and I just had to look into it. A home curfew base unit CDMA BU3000, which is like, oh, that's an interesting thing. Um, looking at the frequencies, the only frequency approval they're looking for is 433.92 megahertz, which is the you know 433 ISM quote unquote band. So go into the database and have a look. Pull up the manual first, see what that is, and hey, yep, that's that's what it is. <laughs> So here's our base unit, and here's our actual anklet that the user wears. Um, talking about all of the things to do, you can create schedules for curfew. You can, you know, it shows you how to put the bracelet on, shows you how to take the bracelet off, all sorts of good things uh, in terms of learning how to to be a parole officer. Um, so here's all this stuff, and it's pretty neat because it's. I don't know if you notice, it's got this little. Um, telephone handset here and then these buttons for answer hang up and call and so you can call into your parole officer from this little box and it also happens to know where you are <laughs> so you know we've got this web app uh, like web portal for all of the monitoring and stuff which is pretty neat but um, yeah so you enroll people and so on and so forth and at this point it's just a crazy oracle app but it does have GPS tracking which is pretty cool um, so let's go in and have a look at that. So um, here's the external photos, and it's basically what we were just looking at. Um, nothing all that interesting here. So now let's look at the internal photos because those are more fun. So here's the thing taken apart, and you can see it's it's a really nice bit of design. Like the buttons have their own PCB up on the front. Um, it looks like there's supposed to be a display there, and I think there is one installed based on this cable. Um, over here, we've got a spot for a battery pack that's all molded in on the two sides so that it's seated nice and tight. Um, we have this weird thing coming out over here, which we'll get to. We have this little antenna stuck inside the case, which is fun. Um, and then there's a speaker built in so that you can be loud at people. Um, then there's other crazy stuff, so we'll, we'll go into that. Um, so the front panel is not all that interesting. It's got some little micro that I can't quite place um, for probably button um, decode and also the screen management. Um, and then there's this thing. So the Telet Cellular V2 with this bizarro antenna. Um, so what this is, is this is an actual, it's a folded dipole, but it I'm honestly not quite sure how it works. It's a weird bit of design. Um, it's just a sheet of metal that's had this J stamped out of it, and then there's little feed lines stuck on the side that go up to the, the actual thing. Uh, if we turn the board over, those two feed points are right here. So there's one and two, and they're labeled GSM antenna and div antenna, so diversity antenna. I'm honestly not sure if they're really separate or not. Um, if we look at it, it comes out of this little Telet CE910 dual um, CDMA module here. Comes out through this little micro strip through a UFL connector out. And we've got some room for a little matching network here if we need one, or a filter, I guess, maybe. Um, and then out to the antenna. Um, on this board, we also have what looks to be a little microcontroller of some sort. Max, actually, maybe not. It's a Maxim part. I'm actually not sure what that is. Um, we've got this LED that looks like it's upside down, um, which means there's probably a hole in here for a light. So right here should be status LED. I don't see any hole, so I guess it just shines into the board. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Um, oh, and look here, we've got. USB D plus, USB D minus, uh, mic negative, mic positive for the handset. 
So this thing supports an actual handset, and it, it assumes that it's got an electric mic, probably. Um, so, and it also has a GPS uh, module in it, so this must be where they're getting their GPS from. Um, yeah, so this is pretty cool. Um, then it's got some data connections here. So the uh, RxD, TxD, CTS, DSR, DCD, DTR, etc., etc., etc. So that's cool. Um, so this thing has got an awful lot of stuff on this one little board that is our cellular interface with the big weird J antenna. Um, then we get lithium ion battery pack, which is thoroughly uninteresting. And then here's the main board of this thing. And the first thing that jumps out at me on this is, wow, big old thing. And then immediately, big old switch. I'm willing to bet this is a tamper switch. Um, that, you know, if you open up the unit, that goes click. And it immediately sends out a, an alarm somewhere. Um, but it's adjacent to this big old microcontroller here. Um, We've got this connector here, that connector there. Um, this is probably programming interface because I don't think anything was plugged into it in the in the unit. Um, then this little high density connector was going up to our cellular board, and this is probably a standoff for mounting that. Um, this is the connector off to our front panel. Um, so, and then we've got some connectors up here. Um, we've got three status LEDs. We've got what looks to be an IR transceiver pair, which there could be some interesting stuff on that. I, I don't know where those go, though. But I imagine they're just RS-232 on that pair. Um, and then we've got three connectors here. Um, this one looks like a telephone connector. Um, something has to connect to that handset, right? Um, and then we have this little guy here. And that is a uh, surge suppressor. So this is the thing that handles lightning strikes sorts of stuff. Um, and one of these is going to be phone because there's this little thing here. It's a little filter. And so that's a little uh, transformer. <laughs> it's a tiny little ferrite bead with little teeny tiny wires going through it to, to um, galvanically isolate stuff. Um, also on this side, because there's a lot going on in this board, um, we, we've got to talk to the anklet somehow, right? Um, and that comes in over here. We've got our little radio module there. Or up here, I'm not sure which, but I, I can't figure out what this radio is doing, honestly. Um, it's clearly a radio. It's got this little rubber ducky inside the box. But I don't know what the rest of this is. Um, so what else do we have? Um, oh, there's this big spot here which is where that speaker goes. And I think this transformer is part of that speaker circuit. Um, what else do we have? Uh, we've got power input here. We've got some probably power supply stuff here, etc. So now let's, let's look at stuff in detail. So this is that bottom left corner radio. And if you look close, you might be able to tell that this is a CC1101. This is a standard chip from TI. Um, it's a sub gigahertz radio that gets used in all sorts of stuff. Um, I'll show the data sheet for it here in a second. Um, but so CC1101 in there for that radio. And then this is that top radio. And the picture is just terrible here. So I can't make out the markings on that IC. Um, here's our main processor, uh, NXP LPC2468, um, which is... Um, this guy, it's a single chip, 16-bit, 32-bit microcontroller with half a mega flash, Ethernet, CAN bus, ISP slash IAP, USB 2.0, device host, and on the go, and an external memory interface. This thing is crazy. Like, you could, you could run a whole operating system on this thing. Um, it's a very nice little ARM chip. Um, and uh, it supports a whole lot of stuff, which we'll, we'll see here in a second. Um, oh, and actually, I forgot to mention, here's the tell it module listing that thing is actually. So that tell it cellular module on the, the J board is this guy right here. You'll notice it's got these cute little weird things in its um, LGA pattern. So a land grid array, there's just little bits of gold on a circuit board that you 
you put little globs of solder underneath of it and it solders down. Um, I'm pretty sure these are actual coaxial feed throughs, which is pretty neat. Um, anyway, um, so this is our main processor. It's a big old beast of a thing for running such a simple little application. Um, then this is the bottom of the board. And here's something that I hadn't even realized that I missed on that cellular module. SIM slot. There's a SIM slot on the bottom here. And along with it, there's another tamper switch. So it must be possible to open up the bottom to put a new SIM in and to keep people from doing that or somehow messing with it. I'm not really sure why they put that there. Um, probably better safe than sorry on this kind of device, honestly. Um, but other modules we have on the bottom here, we've got this guy over here, which you can't really see here, but further on we'll see that that's a max 1737 right there, um, which is a standalone switch mode lithium ion battery charger controller. So it's a battery um, module. So this is what maintains the charge on that lithium ion battery in there, um, which is great because it lets, you know, this device run for 48 hours if it loses power, which means if the power goes out, you don't lose your felon. Um, down here, we have another thing that looks pretty much like a switch mode power supply of some sort. Um, this is right underneath of the microcontroller. We've got a big old flash here. And then I'm pretty confident that that's going to be a RAM. Um, over here, in line with these guys, we've got this little mess. Um, these are both connexent ICs along with the transformer in the middle, which tells me that this one is probably a modem and this one is probably a POTS interface, a plain old telephone system interface IC. Um, and so these are going to feed up to here. And one thing we can see up here is we've got these, these connectors. Um, they're all four pins, right? So these two are actual RJ45 uh, modules, but they've only got four pins populated, which is all you need for telephone systems. And this one is an RJ11 with just the four pins plugged in. So this one goes to just a phone, and then these two go to something that uses RJ45 um, to, to do phone interfacing. Um, it's also a mess on these from the, the soldering process. But um, anyway, and then we've got over here some other stuff, um, probably more power supply gunk. Um, and here, this is the other side of that radio for what I think is the actual um, bracelet communications radio. And um, it has this really strange stamped antenna thing. Then it also has a little UFL connector down here in case you want to use that. Um, so if we look, you know, going through, again, this is that switch mode power supply that I was talking about with, or sorry, the uh, lithium ion charger that I was talking about with the Max 1737. Um, big ol' inductor, some pretty darn big diodes, uh, etc. Um, here we've got what I'm pretty sure is a switch mode supply. Um, and here's our, our flash and probably BGA RAM. Not really sure though. Oh, and there's a beeper down here for some reason. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Higher res on the, the connectors. And then again, here's that Connexent subsystem, this transformer for isolation in the middle. Um, this little Connexent chip out here, bigger Connexent chip back here. Um, and I'm sure these are to support both uh, landline data backhaul. So this thing will make an outgoing call every, I think it's 30 minutes or two hours, something like that, um, to report in and send data in. Um, and it'll also accept incoming calls for checking in on the prisoner. Um, and so that's the bottom of this thing. So that's it's a really nice board. I really, I really like this thing. Um, this is really well done. Um, I wish I knew what this particular radio was for, but who knows. Um, the next natural thing is to look for the other half of this. So this is the base unit, the BU-3000, uh, which is what they were updating the FCC um, approval for. Um, but they didn't have the, the bracelet there, so I had to go and actually look in the database a little bit 
to go and find this one. So it's the LSQ TRX 900 F2, which is the bracelet. So here we've got the bracelet to go with the base unit. So if we go and uh, look at the outside of it, it's not a whole lot to see, honestly. So eh. now let's look at the inside. So here's the internal photographs. Um, if you crack open the top, you can see the battery pack here. Uh, I assume that it's openable like this so that you can get in and charge it or whatever. Um, take out the PCB. We see here this weird big U thing labeled antenna one. So I'm pretty sure this is the antenna for that. There's also the UFL connector right there in the middle. But this is probably the antenna that the bracelet uses to talk to the base unit. Here's our big battery, you know, big old capacitor. This is kind of interesting. We'll, we'll come back to that. And then we've got U1 here, which is a zero ohm jumper. <laughs> uh, we'll come back to that. But, but after that last board, which was so beautiful and so just wonderfully done, this is depressing. Um, it's just so bad, so terrible. They've clearly taken a, a SOT23 and replaced it with a little, what would that be, a 0805, 1206 resistor. Um, so here's another view of the front of this, this circuit board. Um, and to get the battery out of the way so we can see stuff. There's a bit of stuff up here, but not a whole lot. Um, this thing gets more interesting when we look at the bottom of the PCB. So here we've got what's probably a vibratory motor. We've got an IR receiver, is what it looks like. Um, got a little chip, which is gonna be the radio chip almost certainly. And then this bigger thing here that's got ST on it is gonna be, it's an STM something something. It's kind of hard to see. And then a little 10 pin jobber here. You know, there's, there's just a lot of stuff here, um, which, it's really unfortunate we can't see this. So I went and did more research. And you'll notice that this is board version 1.4. Every version of this has had a new FCC filing. So um, I went and found an older one. And on the older one, there's a much better photograph here. So here we can see that the, the radio chip is once again a CC1101. and our main IC here is the SDM32L. The SDM32L is um, a Cortex M3, which is a little ARM chip, pretty reasonably nice. Um, not anything to really write home to, uh, write home about, but it, you know, it's a nice little chip. Um, can do quite a bit of stuff. And then the CC1101 is just, you find them everywhere now. Like you find them in ankle bracelets for home home uh, arrest. Um, so let's go and, and have a quick look at that. So um, there's like a dozen or two mod different versions of this thing. Not all that interesting really. Um, some of them even have LCD support though. Like this is, this is a nice family to know if you're getting started in uh, production embedded stuff. But what I really want to talk about is the CC1101. Um, these things are everywhere. And they're super cute. Uh, they've got a little 8051 microcontroller inside of them. Um, you can use them for all sorts of frequency ranges. Um, they, you know, they're fantastic stuff. Like, you know, you can see that they're apparently being used in cat uh, cat scans. You know, glass break detectors, lighting stuff all over the place. Um, and they're close relatives of the CC1101. Uh, or sorry, the 1110, which is what was in the IME. Uh, I don't know if you've seen these, but these are super cool. Um, they're little Girl Talk IME devices. They were meant to do a little like text messaging to your friends without cell phones kind of thing. Um, this is from five or six years ago. Um, they had the CC1110 in them, uh, which worked on the 900 megahertz band. Everything in there was set up for 900 megahertz. Um, some folks figured out that you could actually like crack these things open and hack them. Um, so Travis Goodspeed, who has done a great deal of, of work in all of this, um, you know, the radio and software-defined radio stuff, um, 
also built a thing called the GoodFet, which is a programming module. So he figured out how to use that to reprogram these things. Uh, and then he and Michael Osman uh, put together a firmware for this that made it into a spectrum analyzer. So you've got this little pink thing in your pocket that is a spectrum analyzer. Um, you might have seen recently that uh, Sami K, so Sami Kamkar, did a really cool thing with uh, garage door openers. Um, oh, that's not a very good homepage. So he's done all sorts of cool stuff, right? But the thing here is he used this device to open garage doors, which is pretty neat. Um, so if we look right here, for instance, we'll, we'll get that. Um, so it's a really cool hackable platform, which is neat. But um, yeah, so that's that. And if you, you can't buy them anymore, which is unfortunate. You have to kind of get them. But you can go, and even on Amazon, you can just buy CC01 and CC10 uh, dev kit modules. So I'll, I'll include links for all of this stuff in there, but it's it's pretty cool to go through and you know have a look at what is inside one of these home curfew monitors, and also look at what's inside the bracelet and see that it's all really nicely designed, but it's uh, actually just standard off the shelf stuff. Uh, anyway, that's it for this one. Um, thanks for making it to the end. If you you made it to the end. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below. Uh, I'm always open to criticism on how I do things, how I could do things better, uh, what things I do that just bother you. That's fine too. Not necessarily constructive criticism, but helpful criticism would be good. Uh, and if you have any questions, ask them. If you see any questions and you know the answer, please answer them for folks. Like We can all help each other learn here. So anyway, um, we'll see how these go. Hopefully I'll have another one out here soon. Um, See if there's another thing in the 433 megahertz band maybe that we can play with. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.